Okay, this is the uh, Building and Planning Committee and a special meeting of the Board of Directors. It's Tuesday, uh, Taco Tuesday, right? See. <laughs> two tacos on, on Tuesday. So and it's 2222. That's right, all those twos. Palindrome week. Yeah. And, and Ross, just for the record, I had to call in at two because I'm in central time, not one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> okay, do we have any um, changes to the agenda that anybody needs to make or request? No, sir. Okay, then um, I'll, I'll accept a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion we approve the agenda. Thanks, Gene. I'll second, Ross. Thanks, Fred. Um, Catherine, your vote? Yes. John? Yes. Fred? Yes. Jean? Yes. And I'm a yes, so we now have an approved agenda, which brings us to item C, public comment. And this portion of the meeting is set aside for members of the public to address this board on matters that are under our jurisdiction, but not on today's agenda. Do we have any public comment? Okay, seeing none, then we'll move to approval of minutes from January 25th. Any discussion on these? No, I'll make a motion we accept minutes. I'll second it. Thanks, Gene. John, did you have questions or comments? Uh, no, sir. Okay. For some reason, I got knocked off. Um, any other questions or comments before we vote on the minutes? From anybody? Okay. Then, um, Catherine, your vote? Yes. John? Yes. Fred? Yes. And Jean, your vote on the minutes? Yes. And I'm a yes. No minutes are approved. So we'll move on to item E, master plan project update, and we'll start with train. Okay, I, I thought I was going to have wonderful news that we had finaled the project and closed it. I had the fire marshal here, and we actually finaled the uh, dietary hood suppression project. We finaled the camera project, and we finaled uh, dietary uh, water heater one project. But... The fire marshal and I had had a phone conversation prior to him arriving, and he he said that we were all set to go, and that we. Uh, but then when he got here, he said that he reviewed his notes from six months ago, and he realized that we had we we both thought we had tested what's called the Freon alarm system, uh, but in, in going through his notes, we had not, because it had not been tied into the fire alarm system. It is, it is currently tied into the fire alarm system. So he, he wants to come back uh, because in order to test that, I have to have someone here from train uh, for uh, the program re resetting and reprogramming the system once the alarm goes off because the alarm system for Freon in that room shuts off everything, shuts off the chillers and whatnot. And it's not something that just automatically will restart. So it uh, does require train to come here and, and do a reset. So we are going to reschedule that. We will do that free on alarm test and uh, then he will final the project. Okay, questions for Bob? Nope. I have a question, Bob. Yes. Um, so since it requires, you know, personnel from train to come up, if we have a fire in that room, um, you know, hopefully something minor, but it sets off the alarm, then are we out of business basically until a train person can get up here? The, okay, if we had a fire in the room, it would trigger the fire alarm system, which we can reset. It's the Freon alarm that there, the Freon alarm would only go off if there was a massive leak of Freon out of one of the chillers into the room. Ah, uh, okay. And which does require a train to come out and, and make sure that the, uh, you know, whatever is leaking uh, has been made safe before because Freon displaces the oxygen in the room and, and alarms go off and 
you know, uh, strobes go off to warn you to get out of the room if 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 that were to happen. I, I in 40 years I've never heard of anybody having a massive freon leak in their chiller room, but it could happen. Okay, so it should be a rare thing. Hopefully, it'll never never occur here. But it would put right. the fire out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It would. It would smother the fire. It it actually. <laughs> <laughs> Each floor has it has a rupture disc that is piped to the roof, and so if there was a overpressure of the freon in the, in the chiller, it would rupture the disc and go out onto the roof and would not fill the room. It takes some sort of really massive failure on the chiller for it to leak into the room. Okay. So you're taking notes on all of this. You're you're learning from this experience. So when we actually start knocking down walls in the hospital, you're going to be able to figure out, anticipate what the inspector's needs are? It, it's, it's always an ongoing learning curve. What, a, what an amazing uh, journey. Holy cow. Well, thanks for filling us in. Yeah. Okay, the architectural and engineering contracts update. What do you have for us, Bob? Well, uh, Dave and I have been, uh, obviously, you know, obviously we're continuing with the drawing of the plans we're supposed to submit in April. Uh, we have not received any invoices from the architect since our last meeting. Uh, Dave and I, did it get sent out that deal? No, because okay. we're going to bring you a revised one. Uh, and I didn't get the revision done. Anyway, uh, Dave and I have been working on a cover sheet to go with each request for payment that will spell out where we're at, uh, percentage of completion, et cetera. And uh, Dave just approved that late last week. And then he, but he wanted a backup sheet designed. And so I'm working on the backup sheet that will, will provide additional information. That's, and then it, it will list everybody who is to sign off before the bill is, for the invoice is paid. So this, this is a process so that each time we receive an invoice from an architect or engineer, it will go through an approval process, require multiple signatures uh, so that everybody's in agreement that it is okay to pay. Great. Sounds like a, a good process in the works. Thank, thank you, Bob. Yeah, that, that will be in place before our next invoice. Okay. Um. Dave, are you on the line? Uh, yes, sir. Did, did you have anything to say? Uh, nope, I think uh, Bob described it perfectly. Uh, we we want to create a document that a board member can look at and feel confident that uh, the that uh, everybody's looked at the detail and what we're agreeing to pay is, is uh, fits into what had already been agreed upon and approved. Uh, so that there's no uh, doubt in the mind of a board member to sign off on it. They can see the backup. Great. I think that'll be helpful for everybody. Thank you. I'm, I'm sure glad that I hope that satisfies John. He's been a pain in the neck about this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll move on to uh, the construction project manager update. I, and I, I'm assuming we don't need this on the agenda anymore, Heidi? That's kind of what I was thinking. We'll take it off. Yeah, let's take it off for next time. Um, and then status of remaining um, alternate measure measures of compliance, Bob? Yes, and uh, so yeah, I went on the website uh, and, and to look at the status of this particular AMC. This is the one where in phase Two, we want to close the front door of the hospital in order to remodel the lobby and create a secondary exit or entrance and exit down by uh, physical therapy uh, to get people into the building. So, uh, and, and, and it had been forwarded to Jean Chiang. Jean Chiang at CDPH, she approved it, as I think Tim reported last time. Uh, but it is still hanging fire at Oshpot and has not been either rejected or approved. Okay. Um, have you been in contact with our architect recently? Are we still on track for April submittal? 
I have not asked him that question directly. Uh, he's been, they've been sending me stuff. I've been responding to everything. Uh, a lot of questions related to hardware and, and, you know, just lots of, you know, finishes and then furnishings and door replacements and, you know, just a lot of busy work back and forth. Uh, I will, I will, I will ask him that point blank that, that he, whether he's going to make that April 1st deadline and I'll have, you know, then Heidi can let you all know. Great. I, I think that's important to know whether we're on track or not. So it, thank you. It, it is. And I, and I believe we are, but I did not ask him that specifically and I should have. Okay. Any questions for Bob? All right. Then um, the Mountain Mesa Road project. Okay. I've been working uh, for the last several weeks with the architect. Uh, again, he's been sending up a lot of questions. I've been responding to all the questions. Uh, again, <laughs> like lock sets and, and finishes and, and all of these things. The, he's finishing the architecturals. It is out to the mechanical engineer and electrical engineer and structural engineer for their piece. They're all working on it. Uh, and I, I need to pin them down to a date of submittal. Uh, but they've only been working on it a few weeks. So I will, I will get an answer as to when they believe they will submit to the county. Uh, but it's going very well. Okay. No, no snags that you're aware of? Uh, nothing major. Uh, we have to change two bathrooms to handicap accessible. Uh, and that was the main thing. Uh, and just, there's just been a, been a lot of, you know, minor details that have to go on the prints for the, for the plan review. Uh, and uh, I have responded to 100% of those questions. All right. Board, any questions for Bob on this item? Uh, not for Looking Bob. forward to the project. All right. Then we'll move on to item F, which is the retail pharmacy update. All right. Uh, the, the parking lot is complete and done. Good. Uh, it looks great. They did a very, very nice job. Uh, it's striped. Bumper blocks are all in. And uh, they're they're 100. percent They have they have sent me the invoice, uh, which I'm gonna I have processed for payment. Uh, and then the next thing we'll do is we'll work with the staff there on implementing the uh, the drive up uh, outside deliveries. Okay. Uh, I've got a question on that, Bob. Yes. Uh, it, it seems like those uh, stripes where they're going to be delivering it, there's four there. There's four stalls or whatever you call them, lanes. Right. There wouldn't be room for anybody to deliver any medication in between those. They're about eight feet apart. And the car is about six or seven. They, they are standard with uh, parking spaces. I, right. I believe yeah. I've... I believe there will, I mean, there's room to get in and out of your car. So there's no reason that if they're parked, it, we'll be placing signs on two of those parking spaces. Uh, I mean, they only completed it Friday. Uh, okay. And so we'll get the signs up. I think you will find that if you pull in there, there will be room between, even if both cars, there was cars in both parking spaces, that there would be room for, for the pharmacy staff to walk up to their window. Okay. The one it, it does it does look narrow, but it is a full width parking stall. Okay. The one closest to the building. Yes. If there's a car parked next to you and there's a car in a handicap up there, you can't turn right. You can only back straight up. And so if there's a handicapped car there, that person can't get out until something happens. Now it's a, it's a small thing, but we need. Okay, I'll see how it develops out. My understanding was there was a little more space for people to be able to manipulate their cars and everything because it's it's a, a tight quarters to be working in. And it seems like a foolish thing to do. Not not no reflection on you because it's a standard parking. However, we're not a standard service. We we want to be a little better service, especially for somebody who you know we're dealing with we want to be there 
putting them in a standard space uh, where it's at is a little hardship. So you might just look at it, Bob. We can look at it. I'm, I'm not saying we couldn't uh, we couldn't widen out a couple of those spaces. Uh, okay, it wouldn't, be, that wouldn't, be, wouldn't be hard. Yeah, we want to look good at the best we can to, to our customers. So that's just my input. But, All right. But thank you. Any other comments? Okay. Then item G, the clinic remodel project, cabinet replacement. Okay, so I've, I've gone through the third round of shop drawings and uh, and the we're, we're, he's already he's ordered materials at to start uh, building the cabinets. Um, I need to get back with him today or tomorrow. Um, he he has requested and I'm just going to bring this up. Uh, he has requested that if we are in production on the cabinets and he has purchased all the materials and all the hardware, could he bill 50% of the project because that will cover his costs of the materials. Uh, and I told him I would, I would bring it up. Uh, we, we have done that with him in the past uh, due to sometimes taking a little longer than we should to pay but we are doing better on that. So I, 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 Dave, I did not have a chance to pass that by you to see what your thought was. Um, uh, I just, anyway, I just had him send me the invoice and I said I would discuss it with, uh, with the appropriate people to see whether that would be okay. Yeah, my normal uh, uh, thinking on that, something like that is uh, once you're comfortable with, uh, you know, starting the payment process, uh, I unless there's extenuating circumstances with Tim or a board member, I would, wouldn't want to stand in the way of getting it to be uh, prompt and getting a payment out. Do we need a motion to do that, Bob or, or uh, Russ? Probably. Okay, I'll make a motion. We do what Bob just said. Uh, give him the authority to do what's necessary. <laughs> okay, so motion is to delegate to Bob the authority to pay 50% of the invoice prior to completion in order to facilitate the purchase and, and of the I, materials. And I would only and I would only approve that if if I actually I, I would stop by his shop and verify that all materials were there and they were in production. Okay. Everybody understand that motion? Yes. yes I just have one question on are we able to get I understand he could start the project, but make sure that we have a hard date of completion before we start writing checks. I will do that. Thank you. Do we have a second? second? Thanks, John. Any other discussion? All right, Gene, your vote? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Fred? Yes. John? Yes. And I'm a yes. Thanks, Bob. Okay. Thank you. I, I just got one question and looking at the agenda here. Yeah. It said, Heidi said from one to 3.30. Now, what are we going to do between the time you adjourn and 3.30? Well, the floor is yours, man. <laughs> I'll, I'll turn the mute button on. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I just figured we just turn the remaining time over to Gene. Okay, the helipad walkway update. All right, I that one is frustrating me because you know we we voted to prove to go ahead with one of the local contractors, and I have called him multiple times, told him that the project is his, that I need to meet with him on scheduling a start date, and he has not returned my calls. <laughs> so I will continue. To bug him, but I, I can't go with the alternate bit. It's way too much money. So it's just a matter of I got to keep bugging him. He's done a lot of work around here. He does good work. It's just he's not good about returning phone calls and 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 getting start dates out of him. It's it's just it's a little frustrating, but we'll get there. Well, if you need to find him, him and his crew are usually at Taco Bell about 7 a.m. every morning. <laughs> okay. They say we sick Emily on him. 
<laughs> yeah. Anyway, I've, I have done multiple phone calls and I've left messages both on his home phone where he operates his business out of his home and his cell phone. And he has yet to return my call about a start date. Okay. All right. Well, maybe Emily can come to work early tomorrow and stop at Taco Bell on your way in. <laughs> All right, the uh, Pixis installation update. All right, so um, the plans are approved. The uh, the I was working this uh, this morning and yesterday on getting the building permit issued. Um, Osh Oshpod HCAI won't issue the building permit until the invoice is paid for the plan review fee. And uh, I checked with Barbara and the invoice had not come through. I got a hold of Bruce Bigger, who gave me a, a website that you can go to where you can you can retrieve those invoices. And I did so and I took them up to Barbara this morning. And so that that invoice is being processed for payment. As soon as that payment is is in HKI's hand, they will issue the building permit. Uh, I'm putting together a, a list of the materials right now to order uh, because we're going to perform that work with our in-house staff. Um, also, just as a, as a general note, I had to change Oshpod inspectors because when I do the work, I can't be the inspector because obviously that's a conflict of interest. And so we were using a gentleman out of Bakersfield, uh, but his workload is too high and for every project that they're assigned to be the inspector on, they have to be approved by uh, Bruce Bigger uh, based upon their workload. And his workload was too high, but we, uh, we, we located another inspector who's, who's younger and fairly new uh, to the uh, inspector's world, uh, he's, but he is a licensed, which is unlimited. And uh, Bruce has uh, approved him. Uh, he's been interviewed by our architect who has to approve him as well. And our architect has approved him. And so he is being named the inspector on these small projects like Pixis, where I, if I, I'm performing the work, he will be the inspector and he's out of Bakersfield. So. Okay. All right. Questions yeah, or comments? Ross, we, for Ross, we skipped one. We skipped the dietary water heater. What, but uh, we're on the list status project. That one actually wasn't on the agenda, but it was one that Bob had on his contract or on his status of projects list, but it wasn't listed on the agenda. Yeah, and and, and the update is is that the building permit is issued and the uh, and the equipment is ordered, and uh, that one is good to go with with H Guy Oshpot. Thank you. Thanks, Fred. I didn't catch that. Back, back to the what we were just at. Fixes, yeah. Yeah, can I make a motion that we, the board, uh, tells uh, Ashpad that we trust him to inspect his own work? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, they for, for uh, many years, they allowed me to do so when I was down in Bakersfield. Uh, and then the, the person that I answered to in Sacramento was on vacation. And the paperwork was sent up for me to be the inspector and the contractor, and uh, and they went, mm, no, that's not going to happen anymore. But that was like twelve years ago. So ever since then, as long as it's one hundred percent contracted out uh, to a general contractor, I can be the inspector. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so I withdraw the motion then. <laughs> Thanks, I, don't, I don't think I don't think they'll go for it. Okay, item J, the water line from the Kissick tank. Okay, so I I talked with Scott, and uh, I mean he would he would like us to be able to tie in, but he said there is a problem at this point, and that is that the output of the well that fills that tank, and the reason it's non-potable water is because I asked him that question, why is it non-potable water? And he says, because it is not going into a tank, he says, where I treat the water with the appropriate chemicals that the county says I must do in order for it to be drinking water. So the water that is pumped out of the wells that goes up to the tank on the hill 
that is treated with, you know, I'm a, whatever the chemicals are required, but uh, chlorine being one of those, um, that 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 is treated. But the, the 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 small well right there that pumps into that tank, they do not have a treatment on that, and so that's why it is non-potable water. That's just informational. The challenge he says he has is that the output of that well is not high enough to because that tank waters the park. And he says currently in July and August, he cannot produce enough water out of the well to water the park completely. So he, he did say that he is looking into the possibility of lowering the pump uh, to see and whatever else he might need to do to see if he could get more output from that well, at which point we could tie in and be able to do our irrigation. Uh, but currently, he says in the heat of the summer, he would not be able to provide enough, especially if both we were drawing from it and the park, there would probably be about four months that he couldn't produce enough water for us both. But he's making he's making an effort to maybe help us. And my yes. understanding, my understanding, Bob, is the fire hydrants are the ones that would carry that type of water more. And so, if we tied into a, the fire hydrant line, is that possible? Since since Scott owns the water system. I would say yes, and that would that would be an advantage from the standpoint of we would not have to cross the main street between the water tank and the hospital. In other yeah. words, if we could tie into an existing pipe on this side, but right. current, yeah, obviously, as you know, hydrants don't use any water unless there's a fire. Uh, I, I, I'll have further conversations with Scott. He said he was going to look into trying to see if he could get more output from the, from the well. And he, he, he uh, certainly is open to us putting our irrigation on that if, if he can come up with enough volume. Okay, that satisfies me. Thank you very much for, for looking uh -huh. up. All right, any other questions or comments on the water line? All right, then we'll move to item K. The pharmacy, this is the in-hospital pharmacy HVAC system. Yes, I, I'm, I'm assuming you're all aware that CDPH uh, Pharmacy Division has been giving us a lot of uh, issues with um, policies, procedures, training, air quality, et cetera, in the pharmacy. And so, uh, you know, the hospital has responded with several plans of corrections, and we're still in process of finalizing I think the last go around. The last go around went out on Friday. Okay, so the last go around has been sent to them on Friday. Usually takes a few weeks, but in in this process, they have been very insistent that we must provide better quality air conditioning to the pharmacy. Uh, and so originally, we were discussing with them that this would require Oshpod, HKI, and uh, and would take you know as as a general rule of thumb about nine months to complete. And that was not acceptable to them. They wanted a better solution. So Tim challenged me with coming up with a better solution that would be much quicker. Uh, so I, of course, we had the uh, we had the architect and engineers design the system, and it is currently in plan review at, at Oshpod. Uh, but obviously, that takes a period of time. And also, uh, then there's the bidding process of going out to bid. So um, to, to address the first one, uh, I contacted my Oshpot area compliance officer, explained the situation. And I think in your packet is, is the email from him that specifies eight criteria. And we have met all eight criteria. I have all of the information and all the answers uh, that he will then give us an emergency authority to proceed, which means that I could start next week. Uh, I do not have to wait for plan review. There, there is always a little bit of a 
uncertainty there because if we complete the work and then they finish the plan review and the plan review requires some changes, we would then have to make those changes. Uh, but the system is very basic. It's a three-ton heating and air conditioning unit. It has a booster fan. It has a HEPA filter. It goes into the, into the pharmacy through the window. Uh, it dispenses uh, HEPA filtered air to the room. It has a low level discharge that comes back out to the uh, air handler. Uh, there's, it's not likely that there would be any changes in the plan review process. Uh, secondarily, uh, I talked with Scott, our lawyer, Scott Navi, about uh, this being, being, being an emergency uh, that, uh, that we've got, we need to proceed uh, in a more timely fashion than waiting for a month while we're out to bid. And he, he said, absolutely, he believes that this is an emergency and that he says that if the board wants to approve and move forward with the project, that it is uh, all it has to be in, in the motion is that this is an emergency and needs to proceed in a timely fashion. And that will eliminate the bidding process. Now, what I have done as far as the contractors, uh, McKinney's Heating and Air Conditioning out of Bakersfield, they've been in business there for many, many years. They're reputable. They did the new air conditioner on, the, uh, on our clinic a few months back. Uh, they have given me a window of, of costs because, again, they didn't even have the plans, the completed plans until this week. Um, but uh, based upon descriptions and discussions, they had given us a price. Uh, the uh, another contractor given us a, is, is work, working up the price on the concrete slab and bracing and infill of the window. And uh, Jared Electric has given us a, 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 an estimated cost to bring the electrical from the mechanical room over. And I believe all those costs are listed in your packet. Uh, so basically. Uh, what Tim asked me to do is bring this to you as a board that if, if we feel that this is something we, we need to proceed with and it's approved under that, that uh, also the equipment required is, is, has to be Oshpod shaker table. We located one of those units and we have it on hold. We located a HEPA filter out of Los Angeles that meets the criteria and we located the fan that has to be Oshpod shaker table. And we have that on hold and everything is, is in place to move ahead in a timeline that's going to satisfy CDPH uh, pharmacy division. I make, I'll make a motion that we give Bob the authority to go ahead and do the emergency work with whatever price he feels is best. The, the prices are reasonably close, right? Well, it's, if they're not multiple bids, you have to understand, I, I, had, I got a cost from a reputable contractor for the HVAC portion, and I got a cost from a reputable contractor who works for almost entirely for Mercy, San Joaquin, Memorial. That's, I mean, he does nothing but hospital work for the concrete and <clears throat> bracing. And then Jared Electric uh, is an electrical contractor that almost does probably 50% of their work is for all the hospitals in Bakersfield. They, they, they know hospitals inside and out. Um, Let me revise the bid, Bob, if I could. Uh, I, I uh, uh, make motion to approve it as presented by Bob in the packet, all of the, the estimates, the general estimates. Yeah, because if, if we wanted multiple bids, then I have to post it on the current builders exchange and we have to wait the 30 days. Yeah. An emergency. So you, you, you're, you're doing right. And Scott said yeah. so, so. And Scott has advised that we, we can bypass the, the bidding process because of the emergency. Yes, it is. As long as the actual, the, 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 motion. the motion states that this is an emergency situation and needs to proceed in a timely fashion. He says that will suffice. All right. He, he does require one of the price, one of the bids is over 25 grand. And so he does require the hospital's full uh, public works contract to be used with that contractor because it's over 25,000. Uh, that contract has already been reviewed by the contractor, has been signed by the contractor, and I have it right here. So uh, obviously, if this is approved, uh, it'll be sent to Tim for signature on our end, 
And so all of the requirements that Scott has, all the requirements that Oshpod HKI has, uh, will will all be done and will all be met. Now, so Mark could sign for Tim, right? I'm sorry. Mark could sign for Tim. He's in charge. I don't. I don't know, Mark, if you're okay. allowed to sign contract. But we can send it to Tim, or I can drive it down. Okay. So, Gene, your motion needs to in include just a little bit more language that says um, that this is a, an emergency project and that we're authorizing uh, sole source contractors because of the time sensitive nature of compliance with the pharmacy regulations. I, I said, that's what I said. Okay, good. That's what I thought. <laughs> word, word, word for word. <laughs> I'll sign that. <laughs> Hi, you got all that? I got it. Okay. Um, do we have a second on this motion? I'll second, Ross. Thank you. So a little more discussion. So the the price is going to be in the neighborhood, total price is going to be in the neighborhood of 92, 93,000. Is that correct? That includes the A and E fee. Right. Yes. But that's 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 our anticipation of what this is going to cost. Right. I what I and and I have to I already submitted to Oshpod my expected construction costs. And I used, in other words, like McKinney's gave me a, a window of 32 to 42. So I use the 32 because uh, we pay Oshpod fees based upon the estimated construction costs with the final cost accounting at the end. Uh, okay. And so, uh, and so I, I have used the 32 and the 10,000 and the, I think it was 8,000 or I've, I, I don't have a packet open. So, uh, but anyway, I, I use the kind of a, towards the low end of, the, of their estimate as far as Oshpod is concerned. But okay. what you have and the total would be as if we were hitting the top end of that. And I don't believe we will. Okay. Um, any other questions or discussion, board members? I have a quick question. Do we, do we need to put in there that it was determined emergency because of the time frame needed? You know, like the state's not going to, or because we can't wait nine months, do we need to include that somehow, or is that word emergency fit that description? Am, am I making stuff understood? <laughs> so Heidi, can you read back what the motion says? Oh, it's a it's a hot mess, but <laughs> because it's changed a couple of times. But Gene made a motion to proceed with emergent replacement of the pharmacy heating and cooling system as it needs to proceed in a timely fashion, authorizing sole source contracting to satisfy the timeline of CDPA. Okay. Yeah, I think adding that CDPH. Uh, what made it? Okay. What makes okay. it? What gives the reason for the emergency? Okay, that's what I was wanting and was the reason. So perfect. Thank you. Thanks, Catherine. And you're uh, you're relatively sure that this will solve the problem? Yes, uh, yes, because we we are going to in this process we are going to cap and eliminate the original feeds for heating and cooling into that room. Okay. So if if that were the source of this little bit of tree mold, uh, it would it will be eliminated, and a hundred percent of the air uh, will be HEPA filtered. And and as you probably know. We passed our last test with no mold showing in the room by running like three HEPA filters in the room. So uh, yeah, HEPA filtering the air, I, I am certain will resolve the issue. Okay. That, that makes me want to buy my drugs from them. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you want them compounded. Yeah. <laughs> okay, any other questions or comments? All right, Catherine, your vote? Yes. John? Yes. Fred? Yes. Gene? Yes. And I'm a yes. So please proceed. Will do. I will I will is send the email to Oshpod with the eight responses this afternoon. I had a phone conversation with Bruce yesterday and assured him that it would probably be coming his way with board approval this afternoon. 
Okay, great, Bob, thank you. Any other questions or comments before we adjourn? Uh, yeah. I would like to thank uh, Russ Elliott for his support for my son. I think, Russ, you made him win. You gave him confidence. He said, if that guy will support me, I got him. I should be able to do anything. <laughs> so, at any rate, thanks, Russ. Uh, my pleasure. So we need to let Tim know that this meeting only lasted 40 minutes when he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> all right um we are adjourned um we'll see a couple of you tomorrow during uh finance and um we'll see each other in a few days for our board meeting thank you all thank you thank you, thank you bye, bye everyone bye-bye